Hi, this is Krista with thelifeinprogress.ca and this is part of the Hope Map mini-series that I started at the start of the pandemic. And um, you can also sign up for my weekly Hope Map, my raw and real Monday morning email to you. You can do that um, by looking for a link in the bio or wherever I share this video, you can um, head on over to alifeinprogress.ca and you'll find various ways that you can sign up and hear from me each week and reply back. So um, I my notes are not very precise today at all, but what I would like to talk about today is um, make is sort of making peace with the messiness of life. Um, big topic, obviously we're not going to talk for hours, although I would love to. And uh, but it's definitely um, something that is pretty central to a lot of my work and writing and my own life. And um, and I think very much in this time of unrest and uncertainty where people are struggling a lot, um, what can happen is that we you know we're, we're there's a lot um, our mental illness um, can be a little bit less stable, we might need some more help for that, we can notice an increase of anxiety where we may not naturally be living with it. Um, those of us who are highly sensitive people or with you know sensitive nervous systems might definitely know that we're being triggered and um, anyway, and all of us though are probably you know coming face to face with a reality that we hadn't asked for, we didn't expect, and this happens a lot in our lives. Perhaps not on a global scale, but nonetheless, this is a reality of life. Life is messy, and what do we do about it? What how, what will our response be? How do we stay anchored and grounded when life is in fact messy? So um, this is obviously, this is not going to be, you know, sort of a, um, a broad um, and all-inclusive kind of conversation around this topic. I just want to, um, I have a couple key ideas that I want to talk about. Um, and I'm going to dive on in and then as always we can connect outside of this video if you would like more information or want to connect on how we can work together to go deeper into this type of work. Um, okay, so I, I'm i somebody who encourages, so I do this in my work, I encourage and I walk this out that I, t I believe that having a vision for our lives is important. And some personality types are more, they lean that way anyway, and others are more resistant, feels too big, too scary. So, but I work with a variety of, um, you know, people, humans with different wiring, and we look at different ways that can help them kind of ease into this idea of creating a vision for our life. And a vision, um, typically it involves things like a sense of purpose, which can be, you know, either for this season or a larger overarching sense of mission or purpose for our lives. It can include our core values. Um, it can include um, things like, how will you know you've lived well? So there's some different um, different ideas that I use to help people begin to do this work of creating a life vision. And actually, if you're interested, I have made available a mini course called Building um, a Right-Sized Life. It's over on my website. It's $40, half price right now for people on my email list. And I actually walk you through my life visioning process um, in that mini course. It's actually a really good um, kind of foundational beginning place if you want to do this work. But um, so anyway, so having a vision. And so we're not going to focus on how to do that work today. But I just wanted to preface by saying that. And thank you, by the way, for all those lovely hearts. Um, so having this guiding vision, which gives us, it's like hanging up a lantern, you know, that provides a sense of direction and it keeps us anchored in hard times. It keeps us moving when our emotions are really messy and big. And we, if we just listen to instinct, we might curl up in a ball and never get up again. But that vision can just be a, a guiding light that keeps us moving, taking the next step and the next step even when life is uncertain, chaotic, whatever. So, um, but I, I, so I preface with that, and of course, if you wanna hear more about that, I'd love to talk more about it another day, so you can let me know. But I want to just move right into this idea of both and. 
that when we're crafting a life vision, when we're creating a picture of who and how we want to be in the world, of um, how we want our homes to feel, what, what do we want, you know, how do we want to spend our days, you know, that kind of thing. It's not about a fairy tale, you know, waving a magic wand and sprinkling fairy dust. It is, it, certainly it involves optimism, certainly it involves um, a measure of grit and willingness to do hard work to move towards that. Um, but it is honest in the sense that it takes into consideration our real wiring, our strength and our struggle. As I mentioned, our core values, which will be different from other people's. Um, and then it, um, but it also re um, makes peace with the truth that life is not just one thing. Life is not just all glorious and pretty and life is not all just pain and suffering, but it is a messy tangle of both. It is a messy tangle of strength and struggle. And we as humans are a messy tangle of strength and struggle. And so when I do this work with somebody, I'm always coming from this perspective where we can get really thrown off track is when we create a fairy tale ideal that is impossible to live up to. When we do this for ourselves, perhaps we create, move the bar so high that we are constantly feeling like a failure. We cannot measure up or keep up. And so what we're doing is we're actually inviting suffering into our lives because we have envisioned something that is an impossibility. So, you know, we're never, never, never going to be measured up to an, this um, perfect ideal. And so what I think is super important here, if we're talking about the, the pain and the messy or coming to terms with or making peace with the messiness of life, is that a lot of the pain is because it's, it's in here. It's because we've developed a construct that tells us a story that says we should be perfect. We should not struggle. Um, that life is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be stress-free if I do all the right things. If I jump through all the hoops and I'm a good girl and I follow the rules um, or even I, you know, I work hard and all the things. But here's the thing. We're human in a messy world. We cannot escape struggle, right? Um, what it, it's gonna come one sh way, shape, or form. It doesn't mean it has to come in tragedy or, or crises, um, and I hope it won't for you, um, yet it does come in various forms around the world. And we know this logically, yet still there's this inner story that says that if I do all the right things, I'll be protected. Or, you know, if I pay all my bills and I treat people with dignity and respect, I will be treated fairly. But life actually is messier than that. There is injustice. There is tragedy. There are natural disasters. There are unexpected illness and loss and life events. And the goal is not to live in fear at all of these things. Actually, I want to show up with joy every day. Um, and I want you to show up with joy every day, but I don't think we find joy by ignoring the reality of the messiness or the both and. So both and can look like um, I am in an uncertain financial time and I'm grateful for the forced rest to be with my kids right now. It might look like um, my, I'm just making things up um, out of thin air and they don't have to do with the pandemic necessarily. So just whatever. Um, okay, something from my own life. I am um, in a healing time grappling with grief and trauma. And also I am so aware of the beauty in my life in so many ways, both and. Um, it could be something like there's pain in my body. Let's say you're struggling with a physical uh, chronic health condition. There's pain in my body and it's kind of distressing. And also I'm going to keep showing up to life in the ways that I am able. Like things like that, both and. It's not just one thing or the other. It's a messy tangle of both. 
And so I really think that when we keep that one idea in our in our minds, whether we want to frame it as both and or, and that's something that I practice a lot with the women in my Brave and Beautiful membership. Sorry, I got a message and I swiped the wrong way. Um, so that's something I practice a lot in my membership. Um, it's something I use on a daily basis in my own life. Or you might create a phrase for yourself and like write it on a sticky note or something. And you know, something along the lines of, life is imperfect and beautiful. Um, I am strength and struggle. Something that reminds us that we're allowed to be both. If life is both, you're not doing anything wrong. The fact that you as a human are messy and you have strength and struggle, you that just means here you are, a, a real cool human showing up to life. In no, no way is that about judgment. Oh, you're bad or you're wrong or not good enough. But we need to be aware of the stories that we believe that are telling us that, you know, our inner dialogue, or even sometimes the voices, external voices that leave us feeling like crap leave us feeling less than because we can't measure up to somebody else's ideal or somebody else's standard or their way of being and showing up in the world. So I think that when we're thinking about this idea of crafting a life vision that is honest, it is also about um, coming face to face with the reality of what is. So, um, so right now, um, when we come to face face to face with the reality of what is, which is super important if we're going to embrace the messiness of life and learn to thrive even in and through the messiness of life, one of the things that I'm sure you've heard this before from countless different places, but this truth that, this inescapable truth that we do need to learn to sit with the messiness, to sit with the discomfort, even when our instinct is to run and numb. Um, or escape from and this takes work and sometimes we need to do this with professional help because we have some real wounding in our lives and so um, you know get that help ask for that help that you need sometimes you can do this with a good friend um, or you can do this work on your own sometimes with a good resource or you can hire somebody like myself to do this work with you but one way or another, we want to come to this place where we learn how to um, practice sitting in the messiness. It could be um, the weeds of grief, you know. It could be in the discomfort of a relationship that where you are needing to decide, are you staying or are you leaving? It could be um, in the thick, you know, the deep and dark pain of watching a child suffer, you know, or somebody you love suffer and you can't fix it. Um, it could be just as a human, like wanting growth, desiring healing and growth and wondering, am I ever going to get there? So whatever it is, we are going to all have stuff in our life that challenges us, you know, it could be job loss, it can be relationship difficulties, it can be um, issues in our bodies, it can be whatever. Um, big or small, but we have to get to this place where little by little we practice and we're willing to come face to face with the reality of what is and we do not turn away. Um, so when we try to escape, that can look like various things. We can end up, and I did this for years, it can look like different forms of addiction or escapism drugs, alcohol, sex, extra cleaning, um, extra exercising, workaholism, like whatever. It can look like rage, like it can come out in all sorts of different forms, but they can all be just um, examples of how we're trying to numb, suppress, or escape from the reality of what is. We don't want to deal with it. We don't feel ready or equipped to deal with it. And so we kind of try to find another outlet, but it, and even if it offers a temporary reprieve, it never actually does the trick, right? It tends to actually escalate problems or create new problems until we're ready or we feel safe to come on back and start practicing sitting with the pain, with the grief, with the discomfort, with the longing, with the uncertainty, and realizing that it won't kill us. We can do this. Um, sometimes this ends up looking like spiritual bypassing 
which can be really, really damaging, where we we can do this to other people or they might do this to us. Either way, it's damaging. Where we, which, and by the way, spiritual bypassing is another way of escapism. But it's like, you do, it's like, I'll give you an example of where you might recognize more clearly if it's done to you. So let's say that you tell the truth about some fear in your life or um, a struggle in your life and somebody kind of hyper-spiritualizes it and tells you, well, if you had faith, you wouldn't be struggling with that. Or you bury somebody that you love and somebody says, well, they're in a better place now. You're going to see them again. Like what's, you know, whatever. They put their own story on you. And what happens is they shut you down, shame you and make you feel bad for being human, for expressing the full messy truth of what it means to be human in a messy world, which does mean there is space for honesty. There is space for grief and longing and pain, just as much as there is space for delight and joy and laughter. It's not just one thing, remember? It's, it's both and. And any time we try to do this to each other or um, we notice that we feel like somebody's doing this to us, it's a signal that we need a better boundary here um, we, or a wake up call because that is damaging and it's not, it's not true, it's not helpful. The reality is life is messy. When we come face to face with that and we embrace the truth of this, or we embrace the truth that, oh my God, I'm so afraid, or, uh, you know, I just buried somebody that I adore and I don't even, I don't see my future right now, how I can live without them. When we're allowed to tell the truth. We are allowed to be in pain. We are allowed to be messy. We are also allowed to laugh in the middle of pain. We are allowed to feel intense gratitude in the middle of hard times. We are allowed to love. We are allowed to just sort of run the gamut of human emotion in the middle of real life, no matter what. So as I mentioned, when we notice that we're doing this to ourselves, you know, almost like, well, buck up, you're, you know, Okay, pick yourself up now, girl, and move on. Let's just be cautious. Are we making space for the grief? Are we making space for the uncomfortable emotions? It's not that we're going to live there. It's that if we don't make some space to deal with the reality of what is and give permission to anger, grief, whatever, then we will not find that that real healing and develop that true inner strength and resourcefulness which honestly will strengthen us and give us the courage and the sense of capacity or agency to move through all the ups and downs in life knowing that we have what it takes. How will we know we have what it takes when we've been so busy suppressing, ignoring, denying, right? So let's notice where maybe we need a better boundary. Are there people that are speaking into our life who are not safe right now? You may love them, but they may not actually be a safe person in this season. If they will not hear you, if the only thing they'll, they'll hear from you is optimism and, you know, go get them attitude, but they will not allow you to just be heard in the pain or the fear, then they're likely not a safe person for this season. If you're only listening to people who are constantly tearing down, it's sort of this overwhelming ranting and anger and stuff, probably you need a really good boundary around there. Um, or if you're reading people, if you're listening to my Instagram story and it's tearing you down, tune me out. If you're listening to, it doesn't matter how famous the person is, but if you're using a resource that everybody else has loved, but there's something in it that right now it's making you feel less than or um, shame or guilt, probably not a voice that you need to be listening to in this season. So we can just be conscious of that. So another part of this, like I always, always talk about a few different things. I'm always interested in self-awareness, sort of mindfulness, 
noticing, observing, witnessing the truth of who we are, self-compassion or self-acceptance, whereby we come to peace with the reality of who we are, the reality of life, the messiness, the both and, the beauty of, and then imperfect action. I love practical application. I know that no matter what's happening in life, I always have a measure of power and control or responsibility to choose my response. I'm not a victim. I am not without any power. I didn't ask for a lot of things in my life. I wouldn't wish them on you or, or myself. And you probably have circumstances like that in your life, but here we are, right? Now what? So even last time on the Hope Map um, little video, I talked about now what? But that to me is always a signal that um, I can now choose my response. So I can make space in my life for both and. I can practice sitting in all of the murky emotions of life. You know, as I mentioned, the grief, the, the pain, the joy, the, the delight, whatever, all of it. I can set good boundaries. I can really examine whose stories I've picked up for myself, whose voice I'm listening to. And then I do want to move over into, okay, here I am. This is the reality in front of me. Now what? How will I respond? Um, and so this might look like, and, and again, remember that I'm not talking about a specific situation, but I'm overall talking today about come, you know, embracing the messiness of life. So I might see where I need to loosen my grip on a precise outcome or on life looking and feeling and sounding one exact way in order to me to feel happy or whole. So I started out talking about how I advocate for creating this life vision, kind of handcrafting a life vision or building a right-sized life aligned to our core values, our wiring, etc. But what can happen is that, um, as mentioned in the beginning, if we have set ourselves up against this, Im this sort of perfect ideal, um, we're going to constantly come into suffering, right? Meet face-to-face meet -face with suffering. But what if we loosen our grip over and over again on needing life to be one precise way? Well, I think what happens is then we're able to show up with joy and on purpose to the life in front of us. So if I, I just, almost six months ago, one of my, my firstborn died, if my life vision if my happiness, if my wholeness is has to be, include him in my life, that all my three children are alive and thriving, then I'm in trouble, right? Because I didn't get to control that. All I can choose is my own response, which means I can make place for healing. I can work with professionals to help me through trauma. I can continue loving myself. I can continue showing up to my work. I can continue, you know, loving my girls. I, I have so many things that I can choose for myself. But one of the things I have to do is loosen my grip on my life needing to look, sound, feel one precise way in order for me to feel whole or happy. Do you see what I mean? I can continue aiming, and I do. I have actually quite a vivid sense of, you know, what I want my life to look like and where I'm heading. And, and I'm still moving towards that, even though, even though what I've, my life has been rocked in some really fundamental ways, even though I'm still moving towards that guiding life vision but it requires of me to come face to face with the reality of what is over and over again and to loosen my grip on a precise outcome. And again, when I do this, what happens is it makes space for me to be present today, to receive the gifts of this day, to, under, to witness my strength, to be it to keep showing up um, and and to realize that all is not lost 
all is not lost and I still can show up to the life in front of me. So another thing that, that, that this is a sort of imperfect action, a way that we can take action or ask now what? Another thing that we can do in the middle of messy times like the pandemic is to clarify our values. This is so, so, so anchoring. And again, this is really helpful when we're crafting that overarching life vision. What are your core values? They may be core values for your whole life. They may be core values for this year. They may be core values, you know, for let's say that you tend to think ahead in sort of five or seven year chunks of time. But I do encourage you to use something like um, the VIA. Uh, well, actually, that's your no, that's your character strengths. Um, I can't think of a title right now, but there's lots of free things online, quizzes and stuff where you can um, use those to help identify your core values for life or for this season of life. And what that reminds us is that no matter what circumstances are, I can still take action. I can still walk out these values in the middle of the messiness of life. That doesn't change. So an example, let's say that you have a, a value of compassion, you have a value of creativity, you have a value of strong connected family. No matter what else is happening around you, you can always walk out those values. And that actually is incredibly anchoring or stabilizing. Um, Okay, and I'm going to end on this. And then another thing, finally, what I'd like to touch on as we talk about pain and the messy um, or making peace with the pain and the messiness of life, making peace with the messiness of life in, in general, is that we want to take this larger vision of who and how we want to be, of what we want our life to look, sound, feel like, and then we need to translate that always into micro steps small daily habits that inch us forward into the life that we desire for ourselves. So um, if we are only sitting with the messiness, you know, coming face to face with the reality of what is the hard stuff and making space, so that's good, and we make space for the feelings that come up, the anger, the rage, the disappointment, the the hopefulness, the whatever, the good and the and the murky, we make space for all of it, but we stop there, we're still not building a life, right? So we do require action. There is a personal responsibility involved here, where as we mentioned, we might need to set boundaries around whose voice we're listening to. We might need to examine where we've ha have this really tight grip on life needing to look one exact way or else we can't be happy. Um, we can clarify our values and look for practical ways that we can walk them out every day. And then we can look at our small daily habits. Are they conscious? Are they intentional or on purpose? Or are we kind of following status quo or drifting? Even in the middle of a pandemic, whether you're like busier than ever or you're at home and you're not quite sure what to do with yourself, we can make sure that at least some we've got some small daily habits in our lives that are really intentional and move us closer to the vision of who we want to be as people in the world and also how we want our life to look sound and feel so i think that's really important and that can also help us not get tossed to and fro by changing circumstances so if you have these little habits in your life that might look like, for instance, like a dawn and dusk ritual or a morning and evening routine with like, say, five habits tied in there to each one that just help you live on purpose. They take care of your mind, body, spirit, health. Um, they help you begin and end your days on purpose. Um, it could look like chunks of time for your most meaningful work, you know, where you put your phone away, you quiet all the noise as much as possible and you do that focused work. It could look like days off for rest or for walks in the woods or for whatever lights you up, you know, um, tending to your needs because you matter. So anyways, uh, I, you know, so this was, yeah, less, it was a little bit less super concrete, but I, I still hope that you'll have some takeaways there, something to think about. Um, let me know if there's something that really speaks to you or if you'd like to hear more about something if I can support you in some practical way in one of these ideas as you 
come face to face with the reality of what is in your individual life and you choose your response. Um, Tina says, you've helped me greatly in this. Thank you. My morning and evening routines. Oh, good, 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 good. So, um, okay, love that some of you could join me live and um, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.